The reason I'll say that the law of attraction is not really something you can argue as being real or not is because everything around you that exists that is man-made is a consequence of the law of attraction. Let's go back in time 100 years. OK, at a certain point, there was a person I'm tired of having to send pigeons back and forth whenever I want to deliver a message. I'm tired of having to go by horse whenever I want to deliver a message or get a message delivered. OK, that is too much work. It takes too much time. It's way too time consuming. And there's so many different things and obstacles and hoops you got to jump through in order to get a message to someone. OK, that lives far away. And they said to themselves, I'm going to create a system in which I can send you a message, right? With my voice, not a pigeon, with my voice instantaneously without the use of cords extending from me to you or any sort of material that extends from me to you that they can hear my voice and my message as it's happening. As they're hearing it, they can also respond back to me live as it's happening. So instead of it taking months or years for me to send a, a message from here to Europe, right? It will actually take me seconds and I can get a response in seconds. This person first thought it, believed it to be true, believed it to be possible, then took action towards it, took action towards it. And eventually that thought that once seemed impossible is now this. That thought that seemed like it was absolutely unrealistic. You're going to send me a message through the waves in the air. You're going to send me a message through something that I can't see, touch or feel. How can I confirm its physical existence? How, how is that even possible? You can send me a message through the air and I'll get it instantaneously. That's magic. Do you think you're a God? And you're probably wondering, what does that have to do with the law of attraction? What does that have to do with anything that we're talking about? My point being is just like that or with any invention or anything that you see around you that you can physically touch, right? This glass, these clothes, right? This microphone, they were all at one point a thought in someone's mind before they physically existed in three dimensional space that I can touch and I can feel. Okay. And the reason I say that is like, okay, well, how does that idea have anything to do in your relationships? Well, it's the same concept. If I can, who says that you only have to do that with telephones? Who says that you only can do that if um, I'm making a mic or I'm making a camera or I'm making a vase, right? Who says I can't do that for my physical relationships? Who says I can't use my mind and the law of attraction to manifest in my physical reality the relationship that I want. You can, and you have been, whether you realize it or not. And this is the amazing part about the law of attraction is that it works in either direction. The universe is not trying to do anything to you, okay? The universe is only working for you. Stay with me, stay with me. The universe is only working for you, and the universe will work for you in whatever direction you want the universe to work for you. So if you choose to push the universe towards working for you in the direction of not finding love and never feeling like you can be loved or find a good relationship, you're damn sure right, because that's exactly what's going to happen to you. Your life and your relationships are going to be pushed in that direction. And I know you're kind of like, well, I only believe that because that's what's happened to me. So I, I'm, I'm believing it because of my experience. Well, this is the dangerous snowball effect that happens with thought and happens with the mind is that as you believe something, you continue to see that thing. As you see that thing, you continue to believe it even more because you experience it. And as your belief grows in it even more, it becomes an unshakable truth to you and you continue to see it more. It's a snowball effect. So then you say, well, how do I break the cycle if I'm always seeing the same thing? Well, you break the cycle by believing something different. And I know you're probably now you're like, OK, all right, bro, like, I don't want to come on, man. I came here to learn how to tell to get you to tell me how to get him to text me back faster. You're talking about I should believe that my relationships are better. I should believe that I deserve love. That's going to help me have a better relationship. Bro, fuck out of here. We, I, don't, I don't got time for this. I, I know that's probably what you're saying. OK, but if you stay with me, I'm sure I can probably 
give you something that may, 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 may change how you feel, okay? And that actually may be something you can implement into your real life, your real life. Have you ever been around someone that is constantly telling you about how bad their life is? You know, they always say misery loves company. And we talk about energy a lot. If you watch some of my past live streams, you've also heard me heard me talk a lot about how your energy also is of something that can physically be attractive to someone. We, I made the example. Let's say there's two guys at a party. OK, one guy is seven foot tall. Let's say he's above attractive. He's not a supermodel, but he's above attractive. But he's in the corner of the party with his drink in his hand, shoulders down, looking down, not making eye contact with anyone, not talking to anyone, sitting down in the corner, scared as a mouse, scared to even look at anyone. Like we're not even talking shy. We're talking like socially awkward. We're talking like you cannot have a, have a conversation with anyone. Anyone that comes up to him, he's so damn awkward that literally it's impossible for you to have a conversation with him. He just sits there. He's like, he's like shivering, so scared, so scared for anyone to approach him. It's like he doesn't even have, doesn't belong at that par party at all. So scared, absolutely terrified of human interaction, okay? And then the second guy at the party that you see is a guy who is, let's say, five foot eight. He's medium ugly, right? He's not a super attractive guy, but he's not like disgust, bit of a dad bod. But he's got six or seven people following him everywhere he goes in the party. He's got everyone laughing and giggling screaming, running away, hysterical. He's just so funny. Every time he speaks, everyone stops and listens. Everyone circled around him. He's telling stories. He's making people laugh. He's making people cry. He, he is the absolute life of the party. He's walking around. His shoulders are back. He's saying hello to everyone. Everyone knows him. You can hear people whispering about him. You can hear people talking about him. You can hear people greeting him. People are coming up and hugging him, telling him how much they miss him and how amazing he is and this and that and da 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 da. We can all acknowledge that the more attractive person to us, for the most part, maybe you like super socially awkward, weird seven foot guys who wouldn't look at you in the eye. Maybe that's your thing. But for the most part, most of us would naturally be more attracted to the person who exudes confidence. I didn't say arrogance. I just say confidence. Okay. Right. Confidence in himself, confidence in the way he talks, confidence in the way he carries himself. I didn't say he's rude or arrogant or mean, just a confident person an outgoing, bubbly person. And I say that to say, you're probably like, what does this have to do? What does that example have to do with anything? Well, in that example, if all of us can acknowledge that we'd mostly be attracted to guy number two, then we're also acknowledging that despite w someone's physical features, because guy number one is taller, he's more physically attractive, like, you know, in terms of his looks, right? Everything should tell you that in terms of physical attraction, if you don't know either of those guys, you should be more attracted to guy number one. So what would even change your, your view or make you more attracted or even on the same level attracted to guy number two? It's simply put his energy. Do you see what I'm saying now? His energy, right, outwardly projects and it is also something you can be physically attracted to. You can be physically attracted to someone's energy. And that's why I say all of this stuff, what law of attraction, manifestation, energy, aura, all that good stuff, that is all part of attraction. Don't think that this has nothing to do with attraction. Because if you can acknowledge someone's confidence or the way they carry themselves can make you more attracted to them over someone else who, quote unquote, would be more physically attractive, then you're acknowledging that energy plays a role in someone's physical attractiveness, okay? You have to have a really clear understanding that these internal things I talk about, while on the surface they might be like, well, how does this directly apply to my situation? How does this directly apply to the type of person I'm attracting? How does this directly apply to my relationships? The, the things you spend your brain and thought power on outwardly project themselves and other people can feel that, be attracted to that, or be repelled by that. And if we're all acknowledging that the confidence, right, which means just the energy of someone, can actually trump, right, meaning overtake 
someone's physical traits, then we're actually acknowledging that the energy, the aura, that internal stuff is even more important than the physical traits. We're, we're literally acknowledging that. I want you to focus on what you're manifesting. I want you to focus on what you're trying to attract into your life. I want you to focus on what it is you want in a relationship. I want you to focus on what makes you happy so that you can have more confidence in yourself so that you can have exude that confidence outwardly and other people can be attracted to them, to you, sorry, right? To that confidence and that energy that you're outwardly projecting. Because when we fix all of that, when we work on all of that, right? We change your aura.